Coming up next on All About Android, it's me, Jason Howell, and my co-hosts, Win Tui Dao and Ron Richards. Eventually in the show, we talk about probably the biggest news of the week, Nothing Phone's flashy reveal. But first, we also talk about Drake loving Android. I don't know if that was the purpose of his song, but I like to think that it was. Uh, nearby Share, getting a clipboard shortcut. Uh, having your Wear OS device unlock your phone and... Didn't we already have that? I don't know. We're a little confused about that. Ambient Music Mod version 2. I think it's pretty cool. Plus your email and even a voicemail coming up next on All About Android. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This This is is Twit. Twit. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by Checkout.com. Modern businesses need flexible payment systems that can help them adapt to change, grow, and scale fast. Discover how Checkout.com can help your business thrive at Checkout.com slash Android. Welcome to All About Android, episode 583, recorded on Tuesday, June 21st. The first day of summer, 2022, your weekly source for the latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. I'm Jason Howell. And I'm Ron Richards. And I'm Huynh Tui Dao. And today we have new artwork. I feel like we did this we, a couple of years ago. We, <laughs> well, we, we do did, again. but it's always fun. It's it, For those of you who are Twit listeners slash watchers, you probably know that there's a uh, you know network-wide update going on uh, for the, the show artwork. Right. Um, it's been, I, I've been, I've been on, on bated breath waiting for Lisa's next social media post to, uh, with the latest show update, and I was delighted when I saw the new the new all about Android artwork, it's it's quite classy. I think. Yeah. I don't know, you, can, for our video viewers, can we show it to them, Burke? Do we have it? Yeah, we've got it in the little lower third yeah. down. That looks there. like and Jason. Yeah, looks like Jason. Me, I'm not the uh, yeah. logo, but so, that's okay. <laughs> but it's it's got the little Android I'm make guy. It, I'll make it disappear. Make okay, it disappear. make it disappear. Oh, there Art. it is. All right, so okay. video viewers in the lower left hand corner, you can see it <laughs> blinking. Uh, but yeah, I love it. And so now, if you have to, if you listen to audio, if you have, refresh your podcast artwork, you yeah. can see it. Um, it really, it, it's the essence of all about Android. I think. I don't yeah, know I, like I think that was that was important. I thought uh, when we were kind of going through the process of of selecting art and everything was. You know, personality. The show has a lot of personality. There's also, I've always loved, and we too, talked too about- much per, Too maybe, much personality. Maybe too much for say. our own good. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> entirely possible. But um, I've always loved how how the Android bug uh, logo itself and the Twit bug logo intersect. They, they really, in many ways, look very similar. And so- I appreciate that the uh, the new artwork has the little twit bug with the uh, not, well. There's there's our twit logo. That's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Burke's just having fun at this point, um, but it has the little ear. You know, it has the little Android ear on it. So it's uh, I don't know. I, I really like that about it. So there you go. Nice. That's what I think. It's a, it's a it's nice it's a nice to refresh to repaint the walls sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I, I like it. Yeah, absolutely. Like it. And it's a different uh, hue of green. Like, I, th- I feel like yeah. the green that we had been using before was like a little bit brighter. And hey, why don't we uh, break apart our, our logo changes and, and colors and talk like as we if should, we're designers. For the next we hour. Should, yeah. <laughs> there should be some sort of, I want someone, okay, challenge to the audience, the All About Android community, community you're, so t- you're so talented and we love you. I want someone to go back to our original artwork oh, boy. and do some sort of like animation evolution uh, through the years, uh, to the artwork. Yeah, of today. morph. I would, yeah, uh, yeah. We, I'm, I'm trying to think off the top of my head. We probably have, I mean, God, how many different versions of the artwork do we have? Like, I'm trying to think of what the initial artwork looked like before we started using the uh, the Androidify characters, which was kind of the second phase. I think was it that. <laughs> All my Android drama. Oh my I don't know that it was necessarily man. that. Although, thank you for playing that because I always enjoy. You seeing know what's that. so funny is that I don't even know how you could find our original cover art. Yeah, I don't either. Like, like the internet, like not you know, like everything stays on the internet, it, blah blah blah. Yeah. But like, not podcast artwork. Like you change it in the feed and it's gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So true. Fascinating. I don't know. Fascinating. It's a challenge, and maybe it exists somewhere deep in the recesses of. 
Google Images search. Yeah, or like Wayback Machine or something. Yeah, like that. Ooh, someone can do yeah. that. Or, might actually oh, yeah. be. Or our asset folders. Yeah. Or our asset. Yeah, yeah, probably. But that's, that's no, really that's no fun. I know. I'm that's sorry. no fun. <laughs> well, it's, I'm the bubble burster. So, what is it twit.tv slash AAA? We'll see how far back it goes. Yeah, that's a good question. This is, I mean, that this is, is great content. I, <laughs> when we start the show, like, yeah, diving into our own history. All right. So uh, the earliest, like, it, 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 the earliest it does is April 2nd, 2011. Okay. All right. I have a screenshot here. Oh, wow. I'm I've, super curious. Oh, I, oh, no. It's the Androidify people. It is from the beginning? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the I beginning. guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess it is. Here, um, I'm going to share here, this I'm in gonna, Slack with Yeah, yeah. I was just Burke about to do it, too. And, um, okay. That's oh. interesting. Oh, yeah. I don't know that I realized that it was Androidify from the beginning. Well, but this I guess is episode this is episode one. Yeah, all about Android one. Right. Yeah, and I, I, yeah. I jumped to episode three for some reason, but yeah. still. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's so what interesting. I, I didn't. What know I liked. They, they what I liked characters. about our original Androidified people is I have a parrot on my shoulder. <laughs> yes. Don't, so. don't know why. Don't know yeah. why, but you do. J Jason, I'm pretty sure you have I mean, a ray gun. Dude, that's yes. just that's or a like sonic screwdriver. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sonic screwdriver. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's my ray gun. Pew, pew. Uh, yeah. There we go. Uh, anyways, so that's the, that's the challenge for anyone who is design inclined uh, or animation inclined. Uh, seek out on the Internet Archive all the different variations of our podcast art and do some sort of slowly morphing transition between them to get to where we are right now. That sounds really complicated. And I don't know how you would ready do that. In a week. Or, yeah, ready next or week. actually tomorrow. two days. Yeah, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Right. yeah. Anyways, uh, we hope that you like the artwork and don't be afraid of it. When you refresh your po your your podcatcher and suddenly it's there, it's not like a different show. It's the same show. You just Still have a different us. one. Yeah. So there yeah. you go. All right. Why don't we uh, get into the news? Uh, yeah, Burke, let's get into the news. I was going to start singing uh, Dr. Zayas, Dr. Zayas. Dr. Zayas. <laughs> um, so, but, then, yeah. but then you realize that was pre-show. Ooh, okay, okay. Now in Discord, I'm, I'm realizing something. Uh, because we had so many versions of the same logo of All About Android, but every year we would have the different uh, graphical accoutrement oh, with it, like the like Android the guy the holding a, yeah. a marshmallow, or the Android uh, the Android bug with a piece of pie. Wow, people in Discord are starting to throw out all sorts of things. Uh, okay, it's still a challenge. Please let us know what you find. All right, Wynn, you got the first one. Okay, well, in kind of news of folks getting a new kind of coat of paint on things, uh, you might have been upset back in April when you thought that Google might be killing Smart Lock on Chrome OS, where you could sign into Chrome OS just by having your phone nearby. But it looks like it really just might be a story uh, in the continuing saga of Google updates, merges, and renames things a shoot <laughs> ton. Uh, and so on top of that, uh, Smart Lock might be getting both a rename as well as expanding support to Wear OS as well. So in a recent APK takedown, it was revealed in Google Play services that there might be something called Smart Unlock that okay. was eligible for Wear OS 3 devices. And it seemed to be, okay, to kind of making sense here that it might be using your Wear OS 3 devices to unlock your phone. Now, a friend of the show, Michelle Rahman, spotted something uh, even more recent. So this is all, so all of these have been like strings, like text strings within Google Play services. You know, they like to put in messages kind of uh, beforehand and then that gives us clues. So now we have a thing called nearby unlock. Mm -hmm. So we had smart lock, we had smart unlock, and now Michelle found nearby unlock. And including with that was like this little animation that also was in the Google Play services where it shows a phone or being unlocked by a watch. So, yeah, um, okay. so it's possible that Smart Lock is now going to add Wear OS as a unlocker and then changing from Smart Lock to Smart Unlock to Nearby Unlock. And uh, <laughs> not yeah, so, so not confusing at all. I mean, I kind of like the new name. Yeah. It makes more sense, but yeah, yeah it does. Yep. 
Yep, it makes more sense, but it's kind of weird to see again sauce, how the sausage is made and how the names might progress. So yeah, but there you go. You may very well in the future be able to nearby unlock your phone with your Wear OS 3 device. So there you unlock go. Unlock your phone with your nearby smartwatch that's with your, on your, your wrist. That's pretty yep. neat. Your phone. Watch this. I mean, yeah. yeah. It's neat. I, I don't I don't I won't wear a watch and I'm not gonna use this, but I, <laughs> people who do this but sounds if you cool. are. Yeah. yeah. If you're already wearing a watch and I, like, I wonder how how close the nearby actually is. Don't we kind of already have? I mean, isn't that smart lock right? Like, if you're connected yeah. via Bluetooth, then you can tell mm -hmm. it. Uh, oh yeah, you're connected via Bluetooth. When this Bluetooth connection is made, then uh, deactivate the lock. Or am I mistaken on that? That's my <laughs> assumption around smart lock. I thought that's the way it was. But, I thought so too. Did they retract that at any point? I I do not own a smartwatch so lit right now, so I have not kept track either. Tra I, kept yeah, track either. I mean, I know I know Apple does this. I you know the iPhone and and the Apple Watch kind of have this um, this relationship. Burke, you're saying NFC in Slack, and I guess that's one of the questions. Oh right, right? It like wasn't what is being, right? I feel yeah. like it's just they're just sort of pretending that they invented something new, and but when in in essence they're just sort of. Branding a yeah an action right. yeah. yeah Google does that sometimes yeah, yeah. right I, I, <laughs> eh, it seems new I mean I don't know uh, I mean yeah I, I I kind of sometimes like the names like smart locks like I get it like you know I I don't know I I just feel like sometimes with their branding it. It, it's like an engineer name things and we're bad at naming things. Yeah. So it, I just feel like maybe they just felt like, okay, smart unlock makes more sense. Cause really it's about unlocking the phone, not right, locking the phone. Right, right, right. But I mean, what's smart about it? I mean, not that it's not smart, but it's, you know, it's, I <laughs> guess. You should call it dumb unlock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe they're just trying to get, be as close, I mean, was it um, as close as possible to just yeah. like literally your nearby thing unlocks your phone. There you go. Yeah. No, no questions. No, no confusion about Google what it does. Smart unlock next, like next month. Oh, the, you mean after add, they add name Google? it? Yes. Yeah, add Google at the beginning. Google TM. And then the following month, remove Google from the, the beginning. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so on and so on and so on. It's the game that we play with Google and their naming things. Uh -huh. And we're probably going to talk even more about those those weird things later <laughs> on in the show. Uh, it's even better. Yeah. So, oh. I love it. <laughs> what what would we do without it? Honestly, like honestly, like if it, it was if there were there wasn't so many naming snafus, the yeah. show would be boring, right? <laughs> yeah, it gives Let's us something to talk about. That's true. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, it's not so much naming, but it's uh, buttons related. Uh, so Michelle didn't stop there. He he, you can't stop Michelle. You can't. Mm -hmm. That guy guy's like the Energizer Bunny. Um, <laughs> he activated he activated a new UI for the upcoming clipboard over uh, overlay rehaul. Um, it will include a one tap button to share a copied link via nearby share. And he points out that this isn't something that couldn't be done before. This just brings the feature further forward and easier to use on the fly, which honestly, like, I mean, when I just heard you say yes, like, yes, like this is like, talk about, you know, e you know, like making something that you use often and is handy and making it uh, f uh, less uh, or more frictionless or, you know, easier, easier, like bringing it up higher in the UI, making it easier to use is such a good improvement. So like, this is fantastic. So yeah, I use the clipboard so much now. Can I tell you between copying links and, and all this sort of stuff? Like I, I think I'm using it more than ever. So, Have you ever, yeah, I, oh yeah. When? No, no, I just, I like the editor too, because a lot of times when I'm sharing something, I kind of want to edit, tweak the URL just a little bit. So yeah. I'll do this janky thing where I'll copy it. I'll go to Chrome, stick the URL in the, in the nav bar. Oh, just so like that. I have a space to edit it and then copy it and paste it somewhere else. So I, I, I really like this a lot. I'm genuinely very <laughs> excited. That was going to be my question actually was, have you ever, you know, copied it, pasted yeah. it into another app? I've done it into Chrome, but I'd say more often than not, the app that I end up jumping to is Keep. Like I end up going to Keep oh. and opening like a, a note yeah. thing and pasting in there, which really is just kind of ridiculous. That's a, that's a long way to go to do that that simple thing, um, you know. So if they're baking this feature into the clipboard prompt that you get when you copy something, that just makes a lot of sense to me. Um, just yeah. to have it right there, boop, and you know, be able to send it right on. I like that. It makes makes the whole process yeah. easier. 
That's cool. So, yeah. Having said that, I, I never use nearby share. So, you know, there you go. <laughs> know, neither do I. That's the thing. <laughs> but neat, uh, nonetheless. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Android 13 beta 3.2. That's right. Beta 3 uh, keeps getting updates. But why? So, uh, Android 13 beta 3 came out at the beginning of the month. And then shortly after, there was beta 3.1. And I, I had it in the rundown when it happened, and then I ended up taking it out because I was like, oh, this isn't really that important, I guess. But, you know, and I think there were other stories that kind of superseded it. But 3.1 was rolled out because the original beta 3 failed to offer the beta feedback app for new users, which you kind of want if you're running a, a beta and you want to get feedback from people as far as like what's working, what's not. Kind of important. So they released beta 3.1 that included that app for new users. And now here we are a couple of weeks later, and we've got beta 3.2. And the reason that they've pushed this out, apparently it patches uh, five issues that I was able to read about anyways, uh, that were, I, I suppose they were major enough to not wait for the next beta. beta. They included a back gesture that wasn't working in some apps, um, an at-a-glance settings page that would collapse inconsistently when you were scrolling. Some apps were actually crashing uh, instantly upon opening, which I, I kind of just see that in betas to begin with, but mm -hmm. um, beta releases of the OS. Uh, the microphone would turn on and off unexpectedly during unrelated use of the device, according to 9to5Google. Was this? No, sorry, according to Android Police. And then finally, Google Photos app would crash frequently. So I guess that just made me wonder, like, what, where Google draws the line between let's release an, a point update or eh, save it for the next beta. Like, these five things were important enough, but what made them important enough? I, I don't know, because I'm not used to seeing Google doing these point releases unless they obviously feel like there's reason enough to do it. So, I don't know. What What do you think, Win? I, I guess you would be closest yeah. to kind of the, you know, understanding the machinations of something like this. What do you think? That's, that's a really good question. I mean, like for us, it's a little bit different. Like we, like at Trello, we release every like three weeks, uh, hell or high water, and usually because usually there's just something to put in there. I think with Android, mm -hmm. it's a little bit different, just because um, it's a platform. There's a little more anticipation, and obviously these are these are just like new features. So, I, I think it's really, <laughs> I did I did get kind of a pang though of like you know, calling a dot release and then having things like, you know, just some of the very minute like UI tweaks and things like that. Like it could be one of the crashers. I think like, you know, um, unsurprisingly, uh, devs get a little bit uh, sensitive when it comes to crashers, both making sure that none happen and fixing those that do. So I can't imagine that maybe that, that just um, depending on how they, I don't know, triage certain mm -hmm. things that maybe they just really wanted to get those crashers in and hey, these things are done too. And then, you know, maybe some of the UI tweaks, just like they're, they're really like, I always find it fascinating to see the UI tweaks because they're just so tiny. You know? Yeah, they, I know, they right? They seem tiny. Like, hey, they, we, they move the sharing on the clipboard editor from the full screen to the overlay, which it seems kind of silly, but maybe it's just them hoping to get even more, you know, last minute user feedback hmm. before that final release comes out. But I would say it's kind of interesting. Um, the the question of what makes a dot release is a very interesting one and totally philosophical and also could just be like just 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 throw the stuff in there just to, I, I mean we've had many times where uh, a release doesn't have anything interesting and we have this one message that's bug fixes and improvements I mean everybody has that message yes and sometimes you just get a little bit tired you're just like no wait we wanted we want something new going out fine that little tiny little thing that like took someone like three hours and is really not a big deal fine just put it out there because we want to show that we're improving yeah and it feels it so, feels like a feature instead of just a it feels a bug like a feature yeah like so we, we don't <laughs> yeah. just fix bugs around here we actually have new stuff for you so right, right. it's it's uh it's very interesting and I don't think there's like a clear answer there other than yeah. just keep getting just keep keep it moving or or uh, is it i mean going. what is the next <clears throat> the next release after the third beta are we at release candidate at that point and if so maybe the point releases now are like oh before we hit release candidate well, it's we got to get these things in and it's funny this comes up though because because i just I dealt with this at work the other day there was panicked because um was it uh, a couple of what was it June 8th I'm gonna put the link in the in the uh, slack so Burke can pull it up um, but on June 8th they posted that uh, Android 13 beta 3 and uh, basically mm -hmm. saying that Android 13 has reached platform stability 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. 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 And so and and on that and so on that post, they have a little graphic of a calendar of where we are mm-hmm. in June. And then there over, if you scroll down a little, Burke, um, you know, they hit yeah. platform stability in June and go through July till the final release. And my coworkers were like. It's going to come out soon. We need to be ready. And I'm like, no, we still got time. Like, it's like, it's like, but it's, yes, it's, yes, but it's, it's one notch away from the end. Right. I know. Yeah. It's like, it's like, yes, it's the end of June, but I really don't see this coming out before August, if not in that August to September time frame, on track as they've planned. Right. And yeah. so, yeah. Um, so th- this actually, this is very detailed. Uh, Dave Burke, friend of the show wrote this article mm-hmm. um uh but uh it goes through and explains where where they're going from here and what to expect and it's pretty detailed and on, on that on that regard um but it gives you a sense of where it's coming from and yeah jason i mean if they need to i imagine they'll do point releases but it looks like they're getting ready for the rollout yeah you know? which so. is just crazy every year it, it blows me away how how rapidly it feels it's too fast it's too fast well but but is it because it's still once a year like i feel like right. that's a, that's a reasonable cadence it's just it's just we're so much for like earlier introduced to it now because right. of all the beta because of the fact that they've opened it up and allowed everyone to hop onto the beta so early so it feels fast even though to you know the absolute majority of anyone who might ever get this update like it's it's not because they aren't seeing any of this stuff we're just tuned right. into it we're 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 following so closely that what you were saying when all these little things are changed and it seems so minuscule and it seems so unimportant the majority of people that ever get this update they see all of that at once and so it it, mm-hmm. adds, it adds up in aggregate it adds up to something a, a little bit more major than what we're seeing on a day-to-day basis so at least is that but that michelle Rahman, man he's yeah. he's in uh he's on it on top of it <laughs> yeah actually and i should mention him because uh he also and and you were playing the animation from this just a little bit earlier um burke but he uh he found in this point update uh predictive back animation kind of in effect and mm-hmm. ultimately what that is is you know when you're in an app and you kind of start the swipe to go back instead of that arrow just appearing and then taking you there when you release now it's starting to kind of show you a peek into what's behind it that's what the predictive back animation is going to do so you're going to see this in more apps as more compatibility around this is built out and everything you'll see that little peeking graphic underneath so Michelle knows how to take this stuff apart and show you everything on the inside. It's pretty impressive. Mm-hmm. All right, Wynn, you got the last one. I, I I went back and forth on whether to include this story, I'll be honest, but I think it's I think it's I, good. I, I almost linked this in our chat over the week because I thought it was hilarious. Well, Google seems to not be able to ignore any opportunity opportunity to remind Apple that RCS exists and express <laughs> a desire to Apple yeah. to support the protocol. I know like they just, they just, they just, you know, you can't, they can't help themselves. They can't. And so, you know, we, you know, there was a hard to ignore poke during the Google I own keynote that we talked about when they kind of noted that, Oh yeah, we've got 500 million active yeah. RC, uh, users of RCS. And Hey, we hope that other mobile operating systems get the message. Well, <laughs> in in an absolutely, I mean, I in an abs- in a related but auto left field for me kind of story for sure because I'm an old now. The official Android account used the release of Drake's new album, honestly, never mind, as a yet another opportunity to remind Apple that they should really support RCS. So, <laughs> um, so there's a particular song on 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 this new album called "Tex Go Green." And uh, this again, uh, and, and Android, the official Android requ- kind of responded to it. So if you're an old like me and didn't quite the get Android it, Android team thinks Drake's new uh, song yeah. "Texts Go Green" is a real banger. Yeah, you it refers to the phenomenon when an iPhone user that. gets blocked. <laughs> That's a real yeah. banger, so, everybody. So it's yeah, so there's a whole banger. song that Drake wrote called "Texts Go Green." It seems like you know, kind of a breakup song where you know, a couple are breaking up, and so in reference to the fact that. Not just in the case that your recipient isn't using an iPhone and the bubble goes green if you block that person, you know, the text can also go green. So just saying that, oh, maybe, you know, someone you just broke up with or someone whose heart you broke or broke your heart is blocking you, you might see that text go green. Well, in this tweet, as you may have heard, and uh, the Android account also related that to the fact that, again, uh, text go green, not just when you get blocked, 
But also when, you know, that other person just doesn't have an iPhone and just uh, the the tweet kind of the, the Texas speech lady, the Google lady, um, yes, also kind yeah. of pondered, if only some super talented engineering team at Apple would fix this. You know, just just asking questions, just yeah. speculating, just just positing. Just, Wouldn't that just be great? Just thinking. Yeah. yeah. That's, and this is, did, this yeah. is exactly what Drake meant by the song, by the way. It's not about, you know, someone blocking you. No. It's entirely about Android. Yes, it's it's all Let's about Android. Let's be real here. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about Android. Yes, exactly. exactly. Drake's Wait song is Wait all about Android. Is yeah, Drake a friend of the show? I don't know. Apparently, there's, there's an animated GIF in the um, in the Discord now. of him on his phone, and I think it's an iPhone. So I'm just. Does saying. anybody know who Drake is? Because <laughs> I don't. I do. He's he's a, do. he's an Oakland artist. I'm just yeah, kidding. Oakland. I'm joking. Oh, I, know. <laughs> sure. oh. I live um, in the Bay Area. Yeah. This is insane. I saw, I like when I first saw this, I saw Ryan Reynolds even like re respond to this saying, yeah, oh, I learned so I much that. or something like that. So yeah, it was, you know, it's it's funny. It's definitely not what Drake meant, but you know, <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe, you know, the Android account's right because, you know, if Apple would support RCS instead of a broken heart and green messages, maybe you'd get type indicators, read receipts, end to end encryption and more, you know, when you're talking to your boo, regardless of whether they're, on iPhone or Android or whatever. So, hey, you know, maybe you maybe the way to love, like true love is through RCS. I don't know. I, I'm yeah. kind of behind like, you there. I'm totally with you. I think <laughs> you could RCS be right. Equal, Google, there is your new, mar a free tip from Huynh right there. A uh, free marketing tip, uh, RCS equals true love. True love. True love is true love, true love delivered by RCS. There you no, go, delivered. That's a there good action go. verb. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Delivered, bridging gaps between people, you yep. know, making <laughs> connections. It. There you go. Connecting people. True love. I love it. <laughs> Apple, you love true love. We've solved it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for, uh, for everything that you've given on Android, Drake. Thank you, Drake. <laughs> thank you, Drake. <laughs> All right, let's take a break and thank you. Uh, let's take a break from Drake and thank the sponsor of this episode of All About Android. I really want to keep the rhyming going, but it's just not working for me. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by Checkout.com. Uh, Checkout, you know Checkout. If, you, if you're making payments online through your favorite sites, through your favorite apps, you know, a lot of them are using Checkout.com to kind of drive that. Technology should be groundbreaking. It should promote innovation. Traditional payment systems, as you probably know, or maybe you don't, they're heavily layered. They're disconnected. They're perceived as a cost center to the business. And, you know, many modern businesses actually need a flexible payment system uh, so that they can change, so that they can adapt to that change and grow and scale fast. And we recently came across a company with the technology that approaches payments through just an awesome new lens. It's called Checkout.com. And you've heard us talk about Checkout.com on the, on the network before. Checkout.com is a leading digital global payment solutions provider. Uh, brands like Grab, Sony Electronics, Wise, Henkel. Checkout's flexible payments platform is actually purpose-built. It has performance, scalability, and speed in mind. That's what it's built around. It's ideal for businesses looking to seamlessly integrate better payment solutions at a global scale. They've got a dedicated team of local experts spanning 19 offices, five continents. Checkout.com actually offers a strategic partnership to help businesses improve their acceptance rates optimize their payments performance, grow their business on a global scale, do it globally. Checkout.com exists to enable businesses and their communities to thrive in the digital economy that we're all playing with day in and day out. They deliver innovative payment solutions that flex to your needs. They also offer valuable insights that are going to help you get smart about your payments performance to really understand how that's going, how it can improve uh, if you need to make changes, and expertise you can count on as you navigate the complexities of an ever-shifting digital world. And you get so much with Checkout.com. You're going to get global optimization. They're going to provide local acquiring in multiple geographies. That improves authorization rates. It also lowers costs. You also get a very transparent fee structure. It's clear. It's straightforward. You also get in-depth re reporting. That's going to give you visibility no matter where you operate. Um, 
and where you operate, right? You want expertise on a local scale, you know, considering this is a global service. Their dedicated local teams actually bring regional, international, and regulatory expertise. That allows you to navigate market complexities with confidence. And finally, it's a strategic partnership. They take a collaborative, personalized approach to solving complex problems for their merchants and ecosystem partners. And uh, I mean, there's there's so much to love about what Checkout.com is doing. Of course, we have a lot of developers uh, who follow this show. So you, you developers are going to love the fact that the API is simple. It's incredibly flexible. It's great for what you're doing you know, with your apps or your sites. It keeps things just super easy uh, to integrate. And that's what I like about it. Discover how Checkout.com can help your business thrive. All you have to do is go to Checkout.com slash Android. So remember to do the slash Android there. Checkout.com slash Android. That's going to let them know that you heard about it on All About Android. And we appreciate when you do that. We want them to know that you heard about it from All About Android. And we thank Checkout.com for their support of this show. All right. I think this was one of those weeks where I was like, man, do I restructure the show? Because the, the big news is not the news that we led with. <laughs> I was going to say, we've gone, we've, we've gone nearly a half an hour on the show with, we talk about burying the lead. Like the main event is finally it's, here. It's, it's uh, but something Jason, to do. Yeah. We, need, we, we need you to send us to the, the, to the right part of the show. Though. All right. All right. There, there's something about how this show is structured. When, when this happens, it's like the big news is not really the big news. The big news is later. Maybe I need to rework that, but it's time to get into the big news. It's time for hardware. <laughs> Was that intense oh, enough, Ron? <laughs> oh, <So> man, <laughs> the main event. Does it get any better than this, really? Uh, this, is what we, nothing, this is what we podcast for right here. The nothing uh, parade continues, yes. right? We all know, we talked about it last week. The birds, uh, the Hitchcockian birds delivered uh, the news that uh, July 12th would be nothing's event. And we started seeing little bits and pieces of the phone. Now, I will say when I woke up today, I did not have nothing revealing the entire back of the phone uh, on my bingo card. So bravo, nothing. I, I didn't see this coming. Um, but here we are. Nothing is now something. So the day after last week's show, they revealed the full rear-facing design of the device. And they showed select media and influencers the design at an event in Switzerland. Um, then today, a uh, former friend of the show, I guess he's still a friend of the show, it was just it was many years ago, uh, Marquise Brownlee of MKBHD got an exclusive look at the design of the back of the Nothing Phone. And he showed some of the unique features of the transparent back, which I also did not have crazy LED lights all over the back of the phone on my bingo card either. Yeah. Um, it looks like, uh, so basically in looking at the phone, it's transparent in the back and uh, you see, you know, a bunch of lines that are lined with a series of LEDs. Um, and when they're off, it just looks kind of like part of the design, but turns out those LEDs have not only form, but function. Uh, the light is used to indicate notifications. Um, it glows while reverse wireless charging is happening. Um, the bottom light is an indicator of how much battery has charged. Um, and this is actually rather clever. Uh, it does serve as a fill light for the rear facing cameras. So kind of like a, a pre-installed ring light. Wow. Um, it also has a red light that blinks while it's recording video. Um, and all the lights um, are synchronized and uh, they go blinky uh, to special ringtones. Um, and when it's lit up, it looks like this kind of like white on white LED kind of glow. Yeah. And this has sent ripples through the tech industry. Dun, dun, um, I will dun. give I, I will give my friend credit. Um, yeah, if we can look at the glyph interface um, while we're watching the video, I know I know Burke's rolling the video for our video viewers, but for our audio viewers, the glyph interface looks like kind of like it looks kind of like a G with uh, with a little kind of thing going into it. Um, but if you look if you look at it real quickly, it looks like a glowing Apple logo. Does it? Oh, 
Yeah, it okay. does. It really does. When yeah, it, it kind of does. It, okay. It look, it oddly looks like a weird uh, Apple logo, which is strange. I, I mean, there, there's there's some definite uh, iPhone yeah. uh, design yeah. vibes, yeah. vibes yeah. here. For so sure. so sure. now my initial impression of this is that Bravo, nothing giving us a little, giving a little innovation. Like, how can you, how can you use LED and lights on the back of a phone? You know, the blinking red light indicator for video, the fill light for, you know, for, uh, you know, for taking pictures from uh, with the camera. That's pretty cool. The notification stuff, that's all pretty cool. But after mulling on it for a little bit, I realized that these are the type of features that I'm going to go, oh wow, cool, and then turn off after three days of using them. Mm-hmm. Personally, huh. I I'm know. surprised to hear you say that, Ron. I, 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 the thing is, I think that I think the LED battery indicator is pretty cool, but it just, it just see, this is just a lot of flash. <laughs> it's very flashy. It, I mean, yeah, light, literally, flashy light warning for yeah. the video stream. Yeah, <laughs> so, a little. So bit. what? So okay. So let's go. So when when you saw this, what was your first impression? What did you think? I, 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 I thought it was neat. I think um, I I do like so as as like someone who studied hardware I do always like seeing hardware surfaced like I, I think that's really cool I mean I, I even love that you can see like little serial numbers and that little like cross trash can uh, logo on some of the components I do like that and I do think that is interesting I'm also just underwhelmed I don't you know I I I feel like yeah the whole nothing it down to essentials this is not an essential thing like i don't honestly i don't need flashy gooey lights on the back i don't i mean like it's cute it's really cute and i love the idea of like the glyph interface and i, I really do like it i'm like you ron i'm gonna turn it off after three days because right. th this is just some like when yeah some of them some of them like i you know we used to I, I used to i thought i missed uh you know back when you know i i had like a blue light for notifications and a green light for something else and i, I thought i missed that but i really don't like i don't really use yeah. my phone like that anymore mm, yeah and um yeah. yeah i mean i think it's cool do i yeah it's cool it's just about <laughs> it it's, it's cool it's cute it's different it's very it's different, different. Well, so, J so jason what did you think when you saw it i mean yeah i mean i Obviously, it's very different. When I first, uh, when I watched the video, I watched Marquez's video earlier. Yeah, I, I, I'm trying to trying to figure out exactly how I felt about it. Like, like it's uh, it's flashy, and I, I I would agree. I don't know that I necessarily need my phone to be so bright and flashy for the world. At the same time, I do totally appreciate what they're doing because they basically said, because I haven't really seen a phone do this. It's not that other phones don't exist that have lights on the back, but they're really leaning into this idea that like these lights actually serve a purpose other than looking cool or or right. cool. And I'll put that in air quotes because I think that's totally subjective. A lot of people are going to look at this and be like, wow, that's ugly. But um mm -hmm. but I mean, yeah, they're, they're using those lights in some in some of the the ways that they're using it. It's actually really useful. Like I like that when you plug in the power, that little light right above uh, which you can see in the top right, uh, the top right image, you see that little straight line that's, yeah. uh, that's the, the centered. Indicator. The, 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 the indicator, indicator that's is cool. Right. Yeah. And, and that, that, cool. that yeah. lights up uh, to the degree to which the battery is is uh, charged at that point. So if it's halfway, that line's going to be less. If it's fully charged, it's going to be full. That's pretty nice. I set my phone down, screen down a lot, and um, you know when it's charging as well. So I guess that's that's nice. Um, the idea that when a when a ringtone goes off, everything like flashes. Like I I don't know that I would use that. Although I I appreciate that they're doing that. I don't know mm -hmm. if this is if this is the whole crux of the nothing thing. It's okay. I give you points for doing something new, but I don't know that that's enough to really kind of win. Well, this is this large is, amounts I mean, of praise. It's. I was gonna say this is all flash. It's literally flash. Yeah. It's like you know, <laughs> and all that sort of stuff. And and it's actually funny. We will we we, we will give a little bit of a tease. Uh, our 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 dear uh, Florence Ion is gonna be joining us next week to share her thoughts. But she did an article uh, uh, today on Gizmodo about it. Uh, that I feel like you know to give you a little uh, a little sense of where flow is coming from. This the headline was uh, nothing lives up to its name hypes up nothing. 
Um, and the subhead was the nothing smartphones backlit exterior is neat, but that still doesn't tell us how it will perform. And that, and that's the real crux of this is that like, they're doing the approach of the, you know, like, and, and this kind of ties back to like phone marketing and we talk about it with Google and all this sort of stuff with the, with the pixels. Like now that we know what the next pixel, the pixel seven looks like already is that like, I thought on J July 12th, they're going to unveil it. We're going to see everything and, and like the big surprise, but what they're doing now is they're seeding out bits of it. And so today's beat is about the back of the phone and the lights and how that's different and all that sort of stuff. And it's wacky, but like it, it almost, it, it at the same time gets us talking about the phone and gets us really interested in it. It also does the phone a disservice because it says nothing about what's inside the phone or what's on the other side of the screen. Right. Which, which leaves us in anticipation, but Jesus, it's, it's June 21st. We've got three weeks till the whole phone gets thrown. You know what I mean? So like, it, like I get what they're doing here and yeah. I get, you know, that, the, and you know, they're dealing with this, they dealt with this design event in Sweden and they gave it to Marquez and they did all, did all this sort of stuff, but like, give me a little more than just like what the lights can do, you know? And so I get where Flo's coming from. She'll talk more about it next week. So a little, little teaser there, go check out our article on Gizmodo though. It's a, it's a pretty great article. I mean, maybe it can do more than, than just lights. We, we don't I'm know. Sure it can. About I'm sure it. it can. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, but, but I mean, I design mean, wise, I think we're kind yeah. of seeing the the visual aspect of what it can do. Yep. We've seen that. What were you At least saying? the hardware side. Yeah. But like, I mean, to your point, Ron, like I, I just like that when the launcher came out, it was cool. And there were very interesting aspects of it. And there were like small things that I think were good improvements on, like, say, generically, you know, whatever the generic uh, common issues with smartphone launchers and software is. Yep. But it, it was it, it was like cool. But it, it didn't really like as, you know, just like you said just now with the, you know, this reveal of the back and like the lights and everything. It's like, that's great. That's awesome. It looks really cool. But it says nothing to how the actual software might work, how it might perform, how how is this going to like disrupt like the Android market and drive people to it and keep them there like and, and keep them right. wanting to buy nothing products. I don't get it. And I didn't get it with a nothing launcher. And like, like if you like this, I'm very excited for you. Like, it's really cool. And like, yeah, there's some really great things about it. And like, I, I definitely feel like people should be able to express their style and, and have options like this. Uh, other than that, I'm underwhelmed. I mean, it's cool, but I'm a little underwhelmed personally, but I, I'm not going to buy one personally. That's just, yep. Well, okay. if you, if you want to buy one, uh, you, <laughs> oh, yeah. you Piece could, of cake. Uh, <laughs> you could go to StockX, which is kind of like a eBay. It's a new kind of like a uh, bidding platform. Um, and you can be one of, uh, the amazing people who get to have one of the first nothing phones, um, via StockX. Uh, where, where's all the details for this? So the first chance to get the phone one limited of the first 100 units laser engraved from one to a hundred. And so you can bid on StockX uh, on what they're calling DropX. Um, <laughs> and currently right now, yeah. uh, one has the last one sold for $2,600 and the current bidding is over $3,000 um, to get one of the first hundred, which is just insane. And, just insane. and they have a, please note, this is a new DropX exclusive release. Please allow up to 35 business days for delivery. So. Yeah. So know that if you bid on this and pay three thousand dollars, apparently someone's going to do that. Uh, you're still going to be waiting thirty five business days, <laughs> not just thirty five days. So you know it's going to be a couple days. of nice. months before you get this sucker. Apparently, according to their disclaimer. So this, this, just, this just fits in with everything else, isn't it? And I, yeah, I honestly, I cannot does. wait for Flo to talk about her feelings about this phone. But this just feels exactly. I mean. This is not necessary. Like I've, I've actually, okay, so confession, I've actually bought a pair of Nikes off of StockX before because they were a limited run. They were like my colors. They were like purple and pink. So I had to get them. Nice. And I, I kind of, you know, like that kind of market where, you know, the, the, the limited qualities of very specific things for limited time only, I get it. Like I, I get why you want to go on StockX to buy this. You need to be so freaking hype to go on StockX to buy this phone. Like- and pay three thousand I mean, dollars for it, and pay yeah. three thousand dollars for it. I, I know that you get the engraving. I know that again, if you're really hyped for this phone and you, and you really just want that, I cannot judge you. I bought things off StockX before. This is just so interesting to me because, like, presumably they'll have just regular retail sales. So, I mean, this is again just you're you're buying, you're buying the hype. You're buying that little bit of exclusive exclusivity, and maybe maybe this will be gangbusters and they'll sell like all these hundred phones, and I'm gonna 
eat my lunch or whatever. I'm so but, curious. Yeah. How many of these but, are you actually going to sell at $3,000 no. a pop? There, there are some people Such out there who thing. would be passionate enough to do that. But sure. um, who, well, and you know the, what? The, it's, the, it's entirely possible that 10 years from now, uh, the iPhone is no more. And this uh, nothing phone is, and, and these are super valuable because nothing phone. I can't even. I can't even finish no. that with a straight face. All uh, restaurants, all, all restaurants are now Taco Bell. Um, all phones but, are now nothing. But here's yes, all right. phones are nothing. Nice. But here's the here's the thing about this is that like there's an entire like what baffles me is that there is subculture and communities that eat this stuff up, right? Like all the sneaker heads, like I have a buddy who is like constantly mm -hmm. bidding on these like rare sneakers and all this sort of stuff. Like like this underbelly of collector fetishist, you know, which I'm not judging. I'm just saying it just totally exists. I'm not choosing to spend my money, uh, uh, you know, that way. Yeah. Um, but others might, and if it makes them happy, cool. You know, like if you want to have one of the first one hundred, and you're you're putting a bet that it's going to be worth something. If you're really into industrial design, and is this the net? You know, like if if Apple had done this with the first one hundred iPhones, you know they would have sold for thousands of dollars, right? So you know maybe th th this is viable, but to me, it's it's not a, it's not the way I choose to spend my money. That said, I want to be absolutely clear as we as we're winding down on the nothing parade. I, I, nothing. If you're listening or watching, I want this phone. Like I want to buy. I want to prove me wrong. Like I want to fall in love with the innovation of the back of the, of those lights and and show me. You know, show me that it's not a gimmick. Let's see what the rest of what the phone can do and see how things change. Um, but you know, I am still intrigued. I'm not. I'm not turned off from, from it. I'm not. You know, like I, I'm not saying, oh, it's so dumb or whatever. I'm like, hell, I'm the guy who wanted the 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 modular phones, right? Like that's right. I, like, I want this sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, I do kind of like that it that it kind of looks like a hard drive with its lid. It off, really does. You know? That's I exactly do like what it, it yeah. looks like. That's, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Like I, a hard I kind drive. of do like that aspect <laughs> of it. Um, you know, I, I'm not a big wireless charger. I don't use it. I'm not going to use those nothing earbuds. So putting it on it, knowing when it's lit up and charging or not, I do think that the light on the phone for camera use is clever and yeah. and um, it's usable. You know, Useful. yeah. Like so, you know. So I'm I'm still engaged. I'm still I'm still you know curiosity peaked. I want to hold it. I want to use it i want to get run it through his paces but uh my whole thing with this is just the rollout three weeks out leaning on how the lights are is just a is just a bumpy is a bumpy marketing road but it's carl pay i mean we know the bumpy yeah. bumpy road that one plus went on so he's, yeah. he's a, yeah um, marketing yeah. is his business that's yeah. kind of what he leans into and and trying to market in a way that is different from others and sometimes succeeding and sometimes not um i don't know this is necessarily a failure but yeah. You know, I, I it's think weird. it just really depends. Yeah, it's weird. It's yeah. different. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. That's also one of the things that makes Android great is that phones like this do exist. There's a market of some sort. Uh, who knows how big that market is for a phone that looks like it's been turned inside out and flashes a lot at you. Like, someone, yep. <laughs> you know, you can't get that on iPhone. Uh, so at least there's that. I will say when I first saw the etchings, like the the underneath stuff, we d and we didn't know see, have the um, the full you know back panel to know that there was glass there. I was concerned that it was exposed and that there yeah. wasn't glass there and it would pick up pocket lint. So I'm happy that they've got a you know they cover that up with some glass so that it'll uh, be a little sleeker and nice. I really this is definitely a phone that I have to imagine. Uh, benefits from seeing it in person as opposed to on a screen. That's my guess. So, yep. yeah, I mean, I I think that that it, there is a lot of merit in saying like trying something different. Like, I I don't want to like you know actually that's you know that's definitely clever trying stock X. I would like to see like maybe if anything they should have taken this a little bit farther. Kind of like with the little 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 Nas X shoes and they had like you know the like Satan <laughs> shoes. There were like some you know like kind of. Uh, underground modded shoes with like blood in them. Like, like I, I would, I, I would actually would have liked this stock X drop a lot more if it had been like a real special phone. Like, I don't know. Like, it has like, I don't know, like some kind of some kind of like design special or... artwork etched it. Like, bang, they got Banksy to do 100 yeah. limited edition etchings, <laughs> or one that said it. all or, about Android, or, or <laughs> yeah, or yeah. they had a bird feather in there or something, or just something that tied into. I mean, like, I, I'm all for like them trying to experiment and make it artful, make it interesting and and go for the design if you're gonna put it on stock x for three 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 grand just do something real nuts with it and yeah. I, I i think that would be more even more hypey like that that would have gone with the stock x for me so i feel like there's definitely a lot of hype and i appreciate that and i appreciate the hustle and i appreciate the out of the box i feel like again just like ron said it's a little bit 
eh. Like maybe they should have just done all this stuff at once and we could have just gotten like a billion and a half things to talk about. Um, yeah, yeah. All in one swoop. Or maybe this is all they have. Maybe a couple of weeks from now, they're like, yeah, you saw it's, the blinky thing and you see the yeah, like you, we, Didn't you see the lights on the back of the phone? Come on. Yes, Wait, it's stock okay, okay, okay. I don't think you understand. Yeah. Here, hold on. Let me do the ringtone here. One second, okay? You know, pull up the... Let me show you the battery indicator. <laughs> yeah. See, it says it's only a three quarters lit. That's, that's pretty cool, right? Uh, um, well, what do y'all think about this then? Changing gears, Samsung Galaxy Fan Edition... In the last couple of years, well, it's, let's say the last three years, the fan edition had kind of come out of nowhere. Samsung started releasing this as like a, it's almost like a step down from their flagship release. So the S21 FE would be the S21 fan edition. It would be kind of a step down in their portfolio, but still offered uh, enough for critics especially to be very excited about it. People seemed, you know, who were writing and reviewing the fan edition phones seemed authentically like excited and happy about what Samsung was doing with these devices. Well, last year we never saw one. We were expecting one. Uh, actually, I, I said it a second ago, it didn't actually happen last year. The S21 fan edition ended up actually releasing this January instead. So 2021 went by, no fan edition. Uh, that was actually a few months before the S22 series hit. So it was kind of like really close, a little awkwardly timed, but whatever, it happened. Now Sam Mobile is hearing from multiple sources that the fan edition uh, might actually be be done. They were, you know, like I said, they were kind of hits with critics. Um, but apparently Samsung might be killing the fan edition. How do we how do we feel about that? I mean, Samsung as a company is just a phone company that throws a ton of stuff against the wall. Um, and so I guess I guess I'm not surprised, but I'm kind of surprised because the fan edition did authentically get a lot of really good press. I never, I'm going to make a confession. I never understood the fan edition. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I understood it generally, but I didn't, I didn't like just by the phone. I don't understand why, you know what I mean? Like, I don't yeah. know. I just, I, it never really connected with me. So I, I can't say I'm surprised here. It's yeah. kind of like the opposite of the fan edition. Cause it's like, there's nothing special about it. It's just like, right. what's. I, it's like it should be like the vanilla edition or something yeah or like the the I, you never want to call it like like negative mar i guess you don't want to call it basic or like or light. You know, whatever. So light. not like the, the milk light. the yeah. milk the toast or middle of the road yeah the s21 yeah. light and when you see yeah. that light word which is kind of what it was right it was yeah. like it's like a step back yeah so I don't know what made it a fan. I don't know. Just right. weird marketing. The, never, the name is weird right. too, it never right? Felt like, right. Yeah. What about it makes it a fan edition phone? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. So I, I feel Maybe like we've had a lot grain. of guests on the show who have been really big, like fans of the fan edition. Uh, it, Mateo may have been one of them. I'm not really quite sure. I know we've well, had a few you guests. Can't you, come can't, on. You, mm -hmm. you can't judge Mateo. I mean, Mateo likes a mockadile. So, you know. <laughs> okay, yeah. fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. I wonder if he heard that just like <laughs> somewhere. He just yeah, he was, wherever he was. Yeah. He was like, oh, he woke up from a nightmare or something. <laughs> he definitely heard it. <laughs> he definitely heard it. <laughs> All right. So goodbye, fan edition. Probably, maybe. I don't know if, well, when we'll get the word on that, but that seems to be the word right now. Goodbye. All right, Wayne, you've got the last one. All right. Well, if you're a smart watch fan that likes to jazz up your wrist with custom watch bands to go with your smart watch, you might be in luck when it comes to the Pixel Watch. So sources tell 9to5Google that there are at least seven bands in development for release with a Pixel Watch. Of course, the default that we've seen in all the reveals is this really nice silicon band. But you might have some both higher and lower end options as well. From a high end Milanese, Milanese style band, which has like a woven stainless steel mesh and a magnetic clasp to kind of like the more chunky uh, link bracelet, which you might imagine would be on a Rolex or an Omega. Of course, these might not come cheap. Uh, similar ones for the Apple Watch are at like 349 USD. But if you really want to kind of give your Pixel Watch a high end edge, you might get it. And, uh, I think, let's see, we also might get some leather bands. If you want to go for something a little classy and classic, you might have those options as well. And if you're more looking for something affordable and resilient, you're going to get some fabric and stretch bands as well. So look to those to come out, look for those to come out with the Pixel Watch whenever that does. But I mean, I, I like options. I definitely, the last time I had a, I had a smart watch, 
I definitely was a bit of a, a, a band hog, a band hog, because, you know, just, <laughs> I, I mean, because I wanted like the super red one, like, because I wanted like a lot of flash and fun. But then I also wanted something kind of sophisticated for when I actually had to go to a meeting or something yeah. or like go to a, a fancy dress up affair. So I, I think this is great. Uh, it is going to be a proprietary uh, band system, but that hopefully will provide more options for um, bands and and hopefully you won't have to just resort to finding something that kind of sort of works off of Amazon. Uh, you'll get first party bands if that is important to you. So there you go. Yeah, I mean with first party bands, it's at least has that kind of quality uh, quality control coming directly from Google. Or yeah. they're probably going to have you know third party kind of uh, partnerships. I'm sure as well uh, for some of these bands and everything. But um, I don't know. I haven't I haven't shopped Amazon for for bands to know how hit or miss that actually is it's probably it probably is pretty hit or miss as many things on amazon are when when you shop like that so because when i when i when i heard that the pixel watch was you know using a proprietary a proprietary watch band approach i kind of saw that as a negative because it kind of yeah. I, I always see when new smartwatches are released that being a benefit when you know they say oh yeah it fits all the the bands you probably already have and it's very easy to find new bands but um knowing that google is producing a number of potentially higher quality you know first party bands uh, maybe that means that the quality is gonna be better i don't know but i do like the look of the watch Look at that. Look at that watch. It does look it's nice. nice. It's all rounded it's nice. and slick and stuff. I just hope they don't make any fabric ones. <laughs> well, I think oh, that, they are. Yeah, I think they, they, I think yeah. they will. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, keep it clean. Yep. You're going to have to clean it from time to time. Maybe they'll make some I, denim ones. <laughs> oh, denim my watch band. goodness. That'd be <laughs> <Nice>. kind of awesome. <laughs> there you go. There's an idea, Google. Make it. All right. Uh, coming up next... Uh, some app news. Actually, one uh, one piece of app news that I'm really excited to talk about. Let's do it. So one of my, I would say one of my favorite uh, Pixel features in recent years is the now playing functionality. Um, I just think it's really cool that like, the phone, like with me not having to do anything, just is constantly like recognizing music that's playing around me. And then they added the history to it. So I might go somewhere and the song plays. And then later I'm like, oh, what was that song? And then I look on my now playing history and it's like keeping track in real time and, you know, logging it, uh, all the music that's playing around me. So I've just thought that, and it's kind of magical because it's like stored on the device. Anyways, um, ambient music mod is an app that you can install on a device that is not a pixel in order to have that functionality and that's that's uh initially it required root it, it was first released a a year ago version one was released a year ago and it required root in order to do this now version two is out root requirement is gone and I think what's interesting to me about this is, yes, I mean, the, the, the feature is really cool. If you don't have a Pixel phone and you want that kind of nearby, um, you know, music recognition uh, functionality, you can install this now without root and you can get it and actually more features. It's like the feature set is more than what Google offers. But I appreciate that the developer posted to Medium about the process of making this work on non-Pixel phones. And it kind of sheds some light on the details of how the original now playing feature actually works. I just mm -hmm. thought it was interesting. So I'll, I'll just kind of read to you what, what kind of stuck out to me. Uh, he wrote that the Pixel's dedicated signal processor, all it's actually doing, all of that dedicated signal processor that DSP is doing is recognizing that some music is probably playing. So when we think of this feature, and we like, I, as I've thought of it, is like, oh, the DSP on the phone is doing something really unique and really powerful uh, to you know analyze and blah blah blah. No, all it's really doing is like analyzing to recognize. Oh, I think that's music, and it's probably playing right now. Once it does that, it tells the Android system intelligence app. And if the user isn't on a phone call at that point, or isn't actually playing music on the device itself, so in other words, you know, kind of feeding into its own system, which it wants to avoid doing, then it takes an eight-second recording of what's playing 
the music that's playing, and then it runs that through the track recognition system. And this is what's actually stored on the device. It's that 250 megabyte file, which blows my mind that uh, that it can contain 53,000 tracks of fingerprint uh, data in order to identify. And that's as of June 2022, 53,000 tracks, 250 megabyte files stored on your phone if you have a Pixel. And um, different countries have different databases. So, you know, what's popular in the U.S. might be different than what's popular in another country. So different phones, you know, have different songs inside of that database. I just thought that was kind of cool to get some uh, clearer understanding as far as how that all works. It's pretty neat. It's pretty cool. And pretty cool cool. that, you know, the developer has figured out how to bring this to other phones as well. So. I really, I really like the technical detail that it goes into, especially, especially since there is a dedicated uh, digital signal processor just for the recognition part, yeah, and that's to save battery. And I, I love that idea because it kind of reminds me back of when I used to be a computer engineer and do hardware stuff about how like hyper optimized circuits like this can be very efficient because it does one thing and it does it really well. Yeah, and so it's able to like you know, and, and like the idea of like yeah, like if you had to write an app that just worked kind of like on the regular like CPU of the phone that just knew to listen, it like that that amount of like polling and analysis of data is just like so complicated along with like the other general purpose stuff that a CPU has to do. Yeah, that it kind of makes sense that that wouldn't be very efficient. Mm-hmm. And then the and I, like this is a like what is this feature right? It's like telling you that music is playing. It's not necessarily like the the a fundamental like feature of a phone mm-hmm. but they've they've actually made a a, digi- a digital signal processor a dedicated dig- digital signal processor for this and i i think that's so good it's 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 a feature that's so delightful and that people have found so like you know um you know like people just use it so much that they, they they've dedicated hardware to this and i absolutely love that 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 this that this feature is so important that they they created DS, dsp for it and and yeah like the details are really fun that that uh, th- there's like two se- two parts of it and that you know like the the actual like um sound matching or pattern matching of the music is one thing but that yeah. actually just being able to tell music is playing uh is yeah it's a hard challenge and it's yeah. just, it's really cool it's it, it's a really geeky but very very fun article so I, and i think I oh sorry Rob. I, I was going to say i don't see how anybody that isn't remotely interested in either music or technology or the cross section of the both isn't completely fascinated by this by how this yeah. works yeah, yeah. It's this, pretty is, impressive. this is such a, a wonderful find jason i'm i'm so i'm delighted by yeah. this yeah yeah it's pretty neat yeah. and and uh he he goes on he sheds some light on the fact that the detection uh, like we've talked about, doesn't really need that special Pixel DSP, but um, right because as as we've said, that DSP is really just recognizing that some music is playing, right, and so mm-hmm. it's keeping uh, battery usage and, and CPU usage low as a result of that. And then it does the processing to to kind of you know fingerprint the music and and does that all on device. All that stuff can happen on any phone. Uh, he's figured out a way to do this, you know, so that this works on all phones. It does uh, take a little bit longer because it's pull mm-hmm. it's pulling on a different kind of I, I don't know I don't know frequency or, or repetition is is a little bit longer uh, between you know checking if there's music playing or not or whatever. Uh, but he did show you know he did a lot of tests according to his medium article showed that very minimal battery was used for the feature um but it was hard for him to get an exact uh count on the battery usage because the app that it's tied into this android app that i mentioned earlier what was it uh the android system intelligence app is mm-hmm. an app that um you can't track battery usage on from my understanding so uh but anyways uh, so, so you know, your mileage may vary, but it's it's cool that he that he did this. And actually, I should give him credit by name instead of keep keeping uh, referring to him as the guy who wrote this. Kieran Quinn is the developer of the app, and uh, I just think it's it's really neat. It's a cool feature on Pixel phones. It's it's a feature that I love and continue to use and continue to respect. And uh, the fact that anybody can get it now, go for it. Check it out for yourself. Awesome. It's 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 worth installing and checking out. All right, Wynn, you've got the next one. Okay, so remember how I said at the beginning of the show that Google seems to be repackaging Smart Lock and calling it Smart Unlock and like maybe Nearby (laughs) Unlock and, you know, that uh, Google has a history of recycling names and repackaging (laughs) things? Well, guess guess who else is getting into that game as well? Samsung. No way. Samsung's yeah. doing a Google thing? No. Yeah. And guess Shocking. what they're doing? They're, they're they're taking Samsung Pay and Samsung Pass and guess what they're going to call it? 
uh, Samsung wallet. Yes, they're they're <laughs> oh. they're 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 doing the same thing that Google <laughs> wow. just did a little while ago, and they are yeah. repurposing Pay and Pass to be Wallet. Okay, and so uh, Samsung wa- Samsung Wallet will be a place primarily for your credit and debit cards, allowing you to tap to pay via NFC. Unsurprisingly, but it's also a place for your loyalty cards, your airline tickets, uh, in particular with partner Korean Air. No surprise there. And also your digital car keys. Uh, for now, BMW, Kia, and Genesis will be supporting this, but they will be hoping to expand to more partners. And coming soon, Samsung Wallet seeks to support official IDs like your driver's license or student ID. And on top of that, there's also support for crypto wallets. So, yeah, there, there you go. You uh, just that just seems to be the trend this year: getting wallet, getting your wallets out, getting rid of your pays and your passes and rolling out your wallets. Uh, Samsung Wallet actually did roll out on the Google Play Store on June 16th, and just today, June 21st, became available on the Galaxy Store, replacing Samsung Pay. And it will be, in fact, rolling out automatically to Galaxy smartphone owners in supported regions. So Pay apps are passe, and wallets are what's new. Yeah. 2022, the year of the wallet. It seems like... Ironic timing given the state of the economy right now, <laughs> things like that. But yeah. you know, who are we to who are we to judge or question? Yeah, uh, yeah. no, it's times I mean, like these that you that you clean house and you tidy up. Right. Yeah. That's, exactly. Yep. Yeah. And you rename yeah. things. You, rename you merge things, things yep. together. Merge things together. Yep. Squish them together. And then you rename them next month. Yes. Exactly. And then rename them again and hope no one notices. <laughs> exactly. Just wait till the next I/O or next big event. <laughs> That'll be so, pay and wallet so, next week. Next oh, month. Or or you get rid of them entirely, Ron. Right. You you could Aww. do that, too. And so, Burke, I hope you've queued up uh, the, the, the funeral music for us. Um, uh, and you just heard Burke just curse under his breath. Um, mm. He's he's humming it, even though he's not on mic. He's, 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 he's doing his um, best. Oh, wait. So bum, really, I mean. Bum, 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 <laughs> is that the Imperial March? What is that? Yeah, that was yeah. the Imperial yeah. March. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, you know what? I, I can co-sign on that. I've totally made that mistake too. Like, oh, it's time for taps, and then you, you yeah. play the and then you wait, wait, the taps goes. <laughs> wait, what's the difference? <laughs> there it is. There it is. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that one. Um, so, <laughs> Ron, by the way, there's not an unlimited amount of buttons and sound effects. I wish there was. I, they, had, there. they they sell those little things with the buttons. I've seen them. All my friends who, who do the streaming have them. Yeah, the the, the little buttons. They're deck. unlimited. Yeah. Stream Holy deck, cow. right? Is that, yeah, we've got yeah. that on there, but we don't we have taps. Like, well, you could you clearly, put two next to each other, right? You could remap that one to taps. I feel like we yeah. get more usage out of that. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> oh. um, but, there it is. Uh, but enough beating around the bush. Uh, I'm sorry, everyone. Somewhere, Florence is screaming. I know, yeah. Jason, when you guys, you you both agree with that. Mm. Um, Android Auto is now only available for car screens. It's official. The day it's has done. Come. The phone version has shut down for good. So if you used Android Auto on your phone, uh, no more. Sorry, That's it. for car screens. You're going to launch that app, and it's going to tell you, quote, Android Auto is now only available for car screens. And you're going to be like, but I want to hear it. It's going to be like, ah, 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 ah. It's only available for car screens. And you're just going to have Sad. to listen to it. It's going to cut you Sorry. off. Yeah. Maybe maybe the Imperial March is the right song for this. Oh, see, you had it all along. That's a sad trombone, dude. That's a sad trombone, not the. Oh, that's true. It's not taps. Not taps. I will say this week that I did use the Google Drive. What is it called? Google Assistant Driving Mode because I I just had to test it because we talked about it. I have used it before and it sucks. I I actually messaged Slack right away. I was like, y'all. Stick it in my shorts. Like, why? Like, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I was trying to give it a chance. I, I actually have Android Auto in my car, like on the screen, and I hope I didn't hurt its feelings. But I, I for science and for the Android faithful, I did it, and I did not like it at all. Like, it it seems like it could be have so much potential. But, like, for example, all I did was, like, wanting to navigate home. And then, like, Google Assistant Driving was like, hey, would you like to go somewhere? And it listed home and a bunch of other common places. And I said... And it asked me, where do you want to go? And I said, home. And it proceeded to read to me my address and do nothing else. <laughs> nice. And that was like, your it. home address. Just wanted is, you to yada, know yada. where you live. Yeah. I was like, yeah, that's where I live. Can, can we go? 
Hello? And, and then Can it followed up with, how did we do? Did we give you the information <laughs> you were looking for? <laughs> you no, you, you didn't. <laughs> it didn't even ask me that. It didn't give me a chance to give it feedback. No. It just was like, ha ha. It bye. knew. Yeah. It was, peace <laughs> out. I was just not happy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've right. had similar experience. Mm -hmm. Poor Android Auto. Yeah. yeah. There you go. There's your error message that you'll see next time you try. There we go. That works too. All right. Coming up, we've got some of your feedback, including a voicemail. That's up next. Triple A at twit.tv, 347 show AAA. And Wynn has the first email. Yes, and this is from Rogelio Cruz from Manila, Philippines. Thank you for writing in and letting us know that uh, Rogelio actually was one of those folks that was kind of interested in that Snapdragon, in Snapdragon Insider phone. So we had the fan edition, but we did talk about the Snapdragon Insider phone last week. And Rogelio tells us, hi, guys. Encouraged to Jason's encouraged by Jason's plea to please do <laughs> let you know if there are any Snapdragon Insider Home super fans out here. Well, I am nowhere near being a super fan, but the first but the thing is, when I first heard about the phone, I kind of liked the idea of having a sort of Snapdragon reference phone, as it were. And I did read about how it was basically a generic version of the ROG phone five in terms of specs, but co cost quite a bit more. That part turned me off. Yeah, agreed. Um, all that said, that Snapdragon Insider phone, like so many other great tech products I've been waiting for, is oh that other that other sorry, like so many other great tech products I've been waiting for, isn't available in my country to begin with. So shruggles, Shrug <laughs> shruggles. Thank you, Qualcomm, for not making it my problem. <laughs> That's excellent. <laughs> excellent. <laughs> Very I like excellent. Yeah. I yeah, I'm a super fan of yours, though. Oh, thank you, and look forward to your shows every week nice. oh. thank you thank you so That's much awesome. Rogelio and I actually looked at the ROG phone uh, ROG is Republic of Gaming uh, Republic yep. Republic of Gamers Rog. Gaming Republic of Gamers ROG uh, I'm a big ROG fan my the last PC I, I built was ROG everything uh, I probably shouldn't have complained about the nothing phones LED so much because I like me some LED so I agree uh, it would have been nice to have something like ROG like but there you go. Someone was very much anticip anticipating the Snapdragon Insider phone. But you know what, Qualcomm, you messed, messed up. You People messed up. You messed up. You did it. You messed up. So, um, you and messed up. Just, just for the record, because I do go through all the emails, this was the uh, only response we got from our call for anyone who got the Snapdragon Insider phone to email us. So I'm guessing that if someone did, they probably would have taken the opportunity to send us an email and say it because, you know, you're, you're like one of few and you're very passionate about it. So, well, okay, of course I want to tell them. Uh, but we didn't hear from you if you did get it. So I'm assuming... No one who watches the show actually got the Snapdragon Insider phone. And I kind of wouldn't be that surprised to know that either. So there you go. But I'm happy that we heard from someone on the topic. Uh, and I'm happy that you, it sounds like you dodged a bullet. So congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All right. man. Well, so uh, we always put out a call every week for you to send in your emails that, at AAA at twit.tv, but we also love to get voicemails and video mails and things like that. And this week, uh, we got it all about Android voicemail uh, from Frank from New Jersey. Let's hear it. Hi, AAA show. Uh, great show today, as always. I was listening to you extolling the virtues of Samsung only offering $50 to replace a cracked screen. Just want to give you a little perspective. The reason people don't uh, replace cracked screens has nothing, has very little, I should say, to do with the cost. It comes down to you have to give up your phone for like two weeks to mail it in. Yeah. And of course, you have to wipe your phone because you're not going to send in your phone with all of your data. So, how mm -hmm. many people actually have a spare phone that they can take their SIM card out of, put into, upload that data from their current phone into this new phone? wipe their phone and send their phone away for two weeks. My wife cracked her uh, Samsung phone, screen on her Samsung phone uh, last year. And fortunately, I had an old Pixel that she was able to use. Otherwise, there's no way she would have sent in her phone for two weeks and been without a phone for two weeks. So just wanted to give you guys a little perspective. Keep yeah. up the great work. Thanks again. Oh, by the way, this is Frank from New Jersey. 
Nice. Love it, Frank. Thank you for yeah. calling in. And that and that's the thing. It's like I'm not surprised to hear this. It's like, yes, fifty dollars screen place, but that's great. But you're gonna not have a phone for a while, which is something a reality I don't think anybody can deal with in our world, is it? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, no, absolutely yeah. not. And I mean, there there are screen repair places you could yeah. take it to. Like, there's, God, what phone did I? I did I did replace the screen. I think on my wife's phone at one point, you know, a number of years ago here in Petaluma. That didn't take I, two weeks at least, but still, I had not everybody laugh. has that. I, I'd, I'd laugh because a uh, phone repair place in my old neighborhood in Queens opened a couple of years ago called You Break I Fix. Yeah. And and then I realized that that is actually a very widely popular and and rampant chain across the u.s it is and it's actually like official like you know samsung google apple all that sort of stuff so so look look in your local area if there's a you break i fix nearby near sure, you you think so. they'd be able to turn around turn them around a little quicker yeah samsung you think no or? no if they're like if they do warranty repairs you know yeah oh yeah. there's the store like the you actual, break I fix. Yeah, 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 yeah going in yeah. there yeah like right yeah. literally same day they were you know pay extra for it yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's a good yeah. point. Mail, mailing it off, yeah. If you're gonna wait a couple of weeks for a phone, like not many people, if that's the only phone they have, could be without the phone. They're gonna put that off and put that off until they don't need to, which is what I think a lot of people end up doing. And then they end up, you know, getting to the end of their, at least here in the U.S., end of their contract. It's time for a new phone, time for a new contract. Just yeah. and they just do it, and trade it in, and get, you know, get some sort of speaking trade of. Value. Speaking of new phone, my poor sister came over over the weekend. We had a barbecue, and she's like, "When can I get a new phone?" And I looked it up. I'm like, "Well, the Pixel 6a is coming out in, for Verizon on what was like July 29th or something like that." And she's like, "Oh, but I'm going on vacation on the June 28th." And I'm I like, need oh, it before sorry. then. Yeah, so I feel <laughs> I feel bad. And I was like, I held, I gave her my Pixel 6. I'm like, "Feel this." I'm like, "You could get that phone today if you want it." And she's like, "Ah, oh, it's too heavy." It's a, you know, like she <laughs> like, for you the, the, the 6a is the phone for her. It yeah. just it's taking forever. So yeah, it's just, yeah, yeah, frustrating. Mm. It's right around the corner. Just wait a little bit longer. Hopefully. When you get back from your trip, it'll be ready for yeah. you. Yeah, exactly. That's what I told her. Like, there you go. like going to the bathroom and coming back to your food at a restaurant kind of thing. So. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. So. laughs> That's a great example. <laughs> That's it. That's it. All right. It is time for the email of the week. Scott the Geek got the email of the week. says, I have to say, I do not understand the need for safety net or anything similar. For decades, there have been no problem. There has been no problem running financial apps on devices with effective root. Windows PCs. By default, and almost all the time, a user of a home Windows PC has root, administrator access. And yet we've been running financial apps, Quicken, QuickBooks, that sort of stuff, and accessing financial websites just fine. So why is it suddenly so dangerous and unsafe to run them on a rooted phone? To me, this is simply an excuse to lock down the ecosystem to be more like iPhone. And honestly, if I wanted a lockdown ecosystem, I'd already be on an iPhone. Instead, I'm a longtime Android user. While I'm not currently rooted, it's not for a lack of desire. Unfortunately, it's become nigh impossible on latest model phones. I used to be rooted all the time until my current model, and I missed the functionality that gave me, uh, such as system-level ad blocking, as well as the ability to perform a true full backup of my phone, along with other capabilities. Uh, Android has certainly become a lot less to me with lack of root access. Thank goodness I still have my laptop PC, which doesn't treat me like a baby that needs coddling and bumpers. Scott the Geek. <laughs> I like a good rant. So you got the email of the week, Scott. Way to rant. That was some good rant energy. That was good. Scott threw some spice on that. That was some good I spice, like, Scott. Yeah. That was excellent. <laughs> spice, I like it. Spice. <laughs> rant spice energy. Day. Yeah. It dry it drives the fandom, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean and you know, has a point. I mean, I think of there are a lot of enthusiasts who are, have been in on Android for a very long time who feel the same way that Scott feels that year after year Android is becoming kind of diluted from its former self. You know, it used to be yeah incredibly uh customizable very very nerd friendly right like we could get mm -hmm. in there and do so many things with it because we knew how not because it was easy it was actually very difficult but we were willing to do the work 
and get in there and maybe break a few things along the way. But that just kind of made it even cooler when we finally got to the other side and actually did the things that we were going for to begin with. And now, you know, devices are getting harder to 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 uh, penetrate, essentially, to get past the protection, the security layers. Uh, so it's not as easy to root devices. There isn't as much of a community kind of behind it. And Google does continue to make changes to the OS that in many people's regard seems to be um you know more I iosing the the uh the ecosystem as opposed to embracing the openness of it contrary to what they have you know continue to say about android being very open which i guess by comparison it is but still not quite as open as it used to be i would like to add though there are a lot of features now available to people without having root like all the developers totally. are super powerful yep. you can try yep. anybody can turn them on you could Break your phone in lots of other ways without having to root it. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's a really valuable point. I think that's kind of part of why we are where we're at right now is that Google has continued to improve Android and see some of the things that you did get through these alternative methods and say, oh, well, maybe there's a way that we can bake this feature in or make this more customizable and you know, in a way that isn't quite as deep and detailed as you used to get but or but covers most of the bases that most people would want anyways and it ends up being good enough you know what i mean but. i wonder if there's a factor of with great power comes great liability and maybe <laughs> like wait, like i mean and scott i completely agree with you like i and i agree with you jason that i I miss kind of like the early scrappy days of Android and I miss what it is as someone who like has loved computers and, and technology and, and like tinkering their own. I, I totally get it. Um, I just also think that as Android had become, um, you know, like in the early days when we, you know, we weren't, I was gonna say we, we weren't like, you know, like the number one mobile operating system, you know, it felt a little bit scrappier, but now that, you know, there's a lot of financial success, success and market share that, that there's more to protect and more kind of nervousness around certain things. I don't know if it's right or wrong. I just wonder if that's partially it, it as well. Just yeah. someone, maybe someone's complaining, whether it's OEMs or whether there's like a, a, a thought of like consumer perception of Android. Because I mean, actually, I've been in several. Oh, that that kind of reminds me. I've been in a talk once, and someone was t was like talking about what was that show? What's that show with Rami Malek? Oh my god, Mr. Robot, and Mr. phones. Robot, yeah. And I I remember sitting there because that the, this person was saying that Android that that iPhones are just inherently safer than Androids, and um, I think I was a little bit miffed sitting there in the audience just as an Android developer. And I mean, he he had fair points, but maybe I, I can't help but think there's also perception there because people hear things like that. Um, and, and like see things in pop culture or just on the news and maybe that's just like, I mean, I don't know what the real risk is, but it just feels like, I don't know, everyone's got to, everyone's feeling they're just like shorn thins up, tightening belts and like yeah. locking all the doors and stuff. But anyway. I mean, there is something to be said, said about security on a mobile device versus like a computer, although lap laptops are also very mobile, but Fair. you know, like, like if we carry so much of our lives on our mobile device that if we aren't keeping them secure, the, this, this device is probably more likely to fall into the wrong hands than my laptop. I, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong in that, but I just think, you know, these, these smartphones are far more portable. Therefore more people are taking these out and about in the world and they're going to be more likely to, to be misplaced. They're, you know, a lot less, obvious to lose track of than like a computer you know that that mm. is wide open i'm probably not <laughs> going to leave my laptop somewhere i could totally see myself leaving my phone somewhere so maybe that's why the the greater need for security on mobile versus mm -hmm. something like a laptop so anywho scott the geek you've given us something to think about and i appreciate your rant that's why you got the email of the week congratulations uh, I wish I had an award to give you, but you'll just have to save this podcast episode for eternity and play it for people. Say, see, <laughs> that was my email. You <laughs> Make it your ringtone. Yes, there you go. The whole episode your, is your ringtone. All right, we've reached the end of this episode of All About Android. Before we wrap things up, Burke, take a look at the doc right underneath the sign-off area. I want to thank Gallia in our Discord because earlier in the episode, we put out a challenge to morph our logo. Uh, this will this will mean nothing to audio listeners. 
Uh, and to be quite honest, it will mean very little to video viewers uh, sure. because it's, it's a good start. But anyways, Gallia took the uh, took the challenge and morphed our initial artwork. I think with our current artwork, or, uh, I can't remember. Oh, his, and and okay, not our current artwork. It's our our marshmallow artwork. And my goodness, you can definitely tell the the craftsmanship of this. I mean, that's a morph. morph. That's exactly what we. It's asked. amazing what you can do now with computers. It really is. It's fascinating. So I think this is a great start. We'll see where this leads. Uh, but thank you for taking up the challenge, it's, Galia. This is almost like watching that Michael Jackson video. <laughs> almost oh, um, exactly. Yeah, yes. almost just like that. Black, yeah. black, just black like or white, that. right? Oh, which yeah. one? Yeah. Doesn't matter if you're black or white. You're talking about Thriller. Uh, different. Didn't have no morphing. morphing thriller. Thriller. Yeah, no. that was all practical effects. Yeah. Tom Savini. Yeah, totally. Yeah. No computers. Anyways. Uh, so thank you, Galia. We appreciate you uh, throwing that in there. And thanks to you, Wen. Always a pleasure to get to do the show with you. Tell us uh, what you got in the cooker right now. I uh, got some stuff brewing, but for now, you can find previous stuff I've done on my website, randomlytyping.com. I sometimes give technical talks about Android development, and you can find the talks code and videos there. And otherwise, just find me on Instagram and Twitter, just talking sometimes about Android stuff, sometimes about other stuff at Queen Code Monkey. Right on. Thank you, Wen. And Ron, what you got? I see a link here. Yeah, Is this you can go. Update? Well, first off, you can go follow me at on Twitter and Facebook, not Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, at Ron XO. Um, but uh, you can also download Scorbit in the Google Play Store, uh, which if you like pinball, it's a great app to let you uh, that me and my friends have made to let you track your scores and earn achievements and things like that. But I dropped a link in the doc, uh, and very excited because the brand the newest game out. In pinball is Toy Story 4 from Jersey Jack Pinball. And just today we announced uh, that with their latest code update, version 1.05, uh, you can connect your machine to Scorbit uh, with no hardware needed at all. <gasps> and you can That's start awesome. tracking your scores and earn achievements and things like that. It is very, very cool. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, I know, I don't know if there's anybody listening who's into this stuff, but if you are, you know what I'm talking about. If you know, you know. So If you know, is. you know. <laughs> and you, you know. Right on. Scorbit. Yep. Pinball uh, on Twitter to, to find that at Scorbit Pinball, right? Scorbit.io. You go to the website. There we go. The, so, the website's yeah. probably better than your Twitter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or go to Scorbit Pinball on Twitter or Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Good work, Ron. Thank yeah. you. Thanks. Uh, big thanks to Victor working hard behind the scenes, creating some graphics for the show, doing all the, the new visual stuff to, to get it uh, over to Burke, who I also want to thank, who's in here in the studio at the TriCaster, bringing all that stuff in and making it happen in real time. Couldn't do the show without both of you, so thank you. Uh, you can find me... There we go. That was Burke. Nice. Uh, you can find me at Jason Howell on Twitter, also doing Tech News Weekly every Thursday with Micah Sargent, a fun interview show that we do. So check that out, twit.tv slash TNW, uh, Tech News Weekly. And then uh, Club Twit, twit.tv slash Club Twit. That's our subscription-based ad-free tier Essentially, if you want all of our shows, no ads, well, we have we can hook you up. It's called Club Twit. If you want exclusive access to a Twit Plus podcast feed with shows that you don't get outside of the club, well, we can, we can do that as well. That's Club Twit. And finally, if you want access to our members-only Discord, Club Twit, $7 a month, uh, twit.tv slash Club Twit. Also, one more thing before I wrap things up. Uh, I realize I haven't said this in a while. But I, no, I'm not going to say I love you, although I do. But uh, help us with the end of year best of episode. Twit.tv slash best of. And uh, let us know if there are any moments from the show now, earlier in the year. It feels early to kind of start thinking about yeah, that, best of. It really of. does. I just got panicked that, it's the end of, that we're talking end of the year. My God. But so we've done do. this so many years in a row that I know that like as early as this feels, it's never too early to start asking True. for these things <laughs> because Fair. we get to October where we start planning these things and uh, it's like it's that's when the panic hits. It's like, oh no. That's, I've got so much work to do before the end of the year and I'm telling you... I'm going to blink and it's going to be here. So twit.tv slash best of. Let us know. Just remember that URL. If something really cool happens on the show, hit that URL. Tell us as much as you uh, can. That'll really help us out. 
Uh, that's it for this week's episode. Twit.tv slash AAA is the show page on the web where you can go to find all the ways to subscribe to the show, audio, video formats, jump out to YouTube. It's all there. Twit.tv slash AAA. Even with the new artwork. I love it. It looks so good. It's thank good. It's thank you all so much for watching and listening. We'll see you next time on All About Android. Next week with Florence joining the, the crew as well. We'll see you then. Bye, everybody. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Did you spend a lot of money on your brand new smartphone and then you look at the pictures on Facebook and Instagram and you're like, what in the world happened to that photo? Yes, you have. I know it happens to all of us. Well, you need to check out my show, Hands on Photography, where I'm going to walk you through simple tips and tricks that are going to help make you get the most out of your smartphone camera or your DSLR or mirrorless, whatever you have. And those shots are going to look so much better. I promise you. So make sure you're tuning in to twit.tv hop for hands on photography to find out more.